Welcome everybody. Welcome to this first Movella Sports Conference. The Sports Conference is about combining sports and kinematics. And today our aim is to give you valuable insight into different tools that can be used and combined for performing analysis in research and in sporting environments. This also includes a detailed look at the latest innovations for measuring human motion in sports, such as EMG, force plates, but also software applications that can calculate kinematics. During this sports conference, our speakers will share their insights about the technology and the application in motion capture. We hope that by showing in the uh, innovative combination of analysis tools for researchers and sports scientists, that they will learn new ways to investigate an athlete's performance capabilities. Hello, everybody. Here we are again. So we're up to our next presentation from anybody. Um, both Björn and Christopher are going to present on how anybody runs. And um, yeah, I'm very curious about their presentation. So uh, let's start with it. Yeah, well, uh, hello everyone. And uh, thank you for taking the time to listen in to our presentation as well. My name is Christopher Ivers, and uh, together with my colleague Björn, we will give an introduction to anybody technology as a company and also our musculoskeletal modeling simulation software, along with a recent technology we have named Anybody Run. And the agenda of today's presentation is a short company introduction, along with an overview of our core products, which is the Anybody Modeling System and the Anybody Managed Model Repository. And then I will hand over the presenter role to my colleague Bjorn instead, who will go through our Anybody Run uh, our recent development. But first of all, Anybody Technology is a spin-off company from Aalborg University in Denmark, and it was founded in 2002. And the idea for our technology was based on the principles behind structural optimization of a bicycle frame, where it turned out that it was very hard to optimize without taking the human body into account. However, it turned out that the same algorithms could be used for musculoskeletal modeling. And that's how anybody was born. And today, anybody consists of two branches where anybody technology is the industry side where Bjorn and I is working. And not very far from here, we have a anybody research group, which are based out of Alba University and is uh, run by Professor John Rasmussen. And, and the research they do there have really has musculoskeletal modeling as the backbone of the group's overall research. And to, today, anybody develops and distributes the anybody modeling system, which is a software for musculoskeletal modeling. And along with the anybody managed model repository, which basically is, is a library that consists of several body models and different application examples, and also validation examples from different researchers around the globe. And when you work with us, it's basically it consists of acquiring a software license. You can participate in online or on-site modeling training workshops, or you can participate in consultancy projects of varying sizes. And as you can see on the figure here down in the, in the slides, our human model has evolved quite a lot over the past years. And this can give you an idea of how much has happened over the last 20 years. So let's begin with having a look at what is uh, anybody modeling system actually well the anybody modeling system is a software that allows you to do musculoskeletal modeling and simulations as input it takes motion data as motion and uh, as kinematic forces and it calculates internal body loads as joint moments joint reaction forces and muscle forces and here in the bottom of the screen you can see an actual screenshot from the software so so this can give you an idea of how, how the system looks Today, the software consists of open body models, which are very diverse and systematically validated by a combination of us and universities around the globe. All models are, all models are fully open and fully customizable for the user, which makes it very flexible in structure and that everything can be manipulated to reach your own goals. We have several motion capture interfaces. Uh, there's options for both using like passive micro system, but also IMU based motion capture from, for example, Exons, which is a process that, that has been very streamlined over the recent years. However, it is also possible to generate synthetical emotions within the software. It is also possible to use imaging to obtain highly subject-specific models. And we do also have uh, several options for accurate motion environments by importing CAD models from, for example, SOLIDWORKS. 
And then when it comes to the output, the system allows you to gain access into every internal variable. So it could be individual muscle forces, muscle activity, metabolism, joint reaction forces. And you can basically, you can view all of the results within the GUI of the software, but you can also export them to several finite element softwares or office systems. At the moment, anybody is used in a wide variety of areas and applications, and a few examples of this is motion analysis, product design and optimization, sports, orthopedics and rehabilitation, and also ergonomics, both with and without exoskeletons. A typical workflow in anybody could look something like this. So you provide the recorded motion data as input, and then you can use the body models which you or others have built, and then you can provide some kind of environment which could, for example, be an exoskeleton or other types of assistive devices. And then you could combine these things within anybody. We can go ahead and solve the muscle recruitment with the inverse dynamics, and then you get a simulation that looks something like that. Basically, this gives you the internal body loads, which you could export and use with some kind of finite element tool. But you can also choose to complete the loop completely by doing some kind of design optimization, and then you can run this cycle multiple times. As mentioned earlier, the software comes with the, the Anybody Managed Model Repository, which is this open library of models, which contains several body models that combines to a full human body model. There is also application examples inside the library, which are very detailed, they are, and they are validated and published by several researchers. And a few examples of this is basically uh, comparing the calculated forces within anybody with actually measured forces in different motions and different postures or within specific joints. And this almost brings me to the end of the introduction, but uh, just before I hand over the road to Björn, I just want to mention that we maintain a full publication list on our website, which hosts more than 800 publications and more than 100 webcasts. So if you have any questions regarding musculoskeletal modeling or just want some inspiration or learn more about it, then you should definitely go and check it out there. And with that said, I will hand over the, the road to uh, Bjorn instead. Yeah, <clears throat> see if I can get into focus here. Thank you very much, Christopher. So I'm going to, to talk a little bit of how we have uh, traditionally looked at motion capture recordings and how we in the future would like to, to use them for, for doing simulations inside our software. So the traditional way is that inside this managed model repository that we have, we have a framework called that we call any mocap, which is dedicated towards motion capture recordings and simulations thereof. And it's a, it's a plug and play solution where you more or less you come with your recording in the form of either BVH, which is typically exported from initial measurement unit systems like Exence, or it can be C3D uh, files that typically come from, from the optical marker system. Uh, and then you, you give it it and you load our model and your simulation should more or less run as plug and play solution from there, giving you all the features that could be ground reaction for predictions or we could extended to have uh, environment objects as you see in the image or we can instrument the human body model with exoskeletons if we were interested in that and we can of course do this uh, on or off whether it's uh, implemented in the recording or not so you could have a recording that was without an exoskeleton and then you can do a trial based on that where you implement an exoskeleton and see what differences it makes without having the need to record it it's, it's but the sole reliance of this is that it, it, you need to come with the motions. As Christophe also mentioned, we, we have to have some sort of knowledge about how, what motions we need to simulate in order for this to work properly. And that, that can sometimes be a big hurdle for our customers. Sometimes they have limited resources to doing these uh, cumbersome recordings. The technology of Xsense has made this a lot better over the years. But still, some, some are not able to come up with the motions that they want to simulate. So we have been thinking a lot over the years on how can we help generate motions or alleviate some of the, the, the questions that, that are to be answered. So, so that has led us down the path of, of how can we help this. So 
to simplify it a little, we need three things in order to make the simulations work. We need some knowledge about how the fourth platform input is, uh, and this we can actually pretty accurately simulate. There have been done some great research on that area, and I will touch upon it a little more in a bit. But the other thing is that we need information about the motion capture input and the anthropometry of the human that we need to simulate. And it turns out uh, that we have de derived a, a method of doing this by using correlations in statistical data. And that's the part I will focus on the most throughout the slides. So the false input, the colleagues over at Anybody Research Group have done some great work over the years. and. And they have actually shown that this prediction of ground reaction forces is, is quite accurate and it works quite well for a wide variety of motions. I put a, a, a small uh, reference here that you could check out if you want to. So, so we have that covered, you can say. So we can actually take um, recordings that do not include force platform information and we can simulate the ground reaction forces quite well. So that brings us to the next hurdle we have, that we need to sort of estimate what is to be the motion capture input and what anthropometry uh, dimensions do we have available. So there have been, uh, we're gonna take an example of running today because that's uh, the product we have sort of come up with so far. So if we look at a picture like this, we can see quite easily that the people in it are running. So we can also see that that they, they run differently. So not one person or two persons in the in the image, they run the same. But we can nevertheless, we can still see that they are all running. So so some motions they they have a lot of variability and they but you can also see they have a lot of trends in that makes it similar. So that I did, what that means is that it they the parameters of running styles they will be correlated statistically. And we can use this feature to sort of generate um, these correlations that then we can then use in a statistical database to generate uh, new running styles that we didn't have to record up in advance. So the way we do this is that uh, we have a goal of overcoming the need for having recordings in the first place. And we know from uh, publications such as this that we can parameterize the movement patterns uh, that are used in, in running into something that's called Fourier series. And uh, that works quite well for cyclic motions. And there's a great paper on that here. So the next thing we wanted to do was to start building a database of running recordings, because we, in the end, we're gonna need a lot of different data that captures all these variabilities that we would like to generate afterwards. So it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter if we only have uh, one, then we can not do anything. So at the moment, we have a good database of around 300 trials. And uh, in the in start, we didn't actually think that would be cover some cover enough of the space. But it turns out uh, that it, it's actually quite well already. And uh, we have a good collaboration with some partners. We have a nationwide uh, running shop, chain of running shops here in Denmark called Kaiser Sport and Orthopedics. And they do uh, motion capture recordings of runners coming into their shops. And we have a collaboration where they send us recordings and we process them through our pipeline. And so we keep expanding this database of, of running motions that we can then use to generate new ones from. So when we put all these things together, we can start making videos and, and running styles like this. This is a completely synthetically generated running style. There's no motion cap recording behind this exact style. So, and it looks quite cool, I think. So, since we established this pipeline and saw that it can actually work for something useful, we started calling it Anybody Run as a service name. So, now we can start to answer questions like, I need an average runner. Okay, we can generate an average running style based on our database then. And we can also start to see that it's completely virtual. We didn't have to do any field work to get it. And it's still completely detailed. So we have the full benefit of our detailed musculoskeletal model. So we can still investigate all the relevant parameters that comes out of the simulations. We're not limited in any way. And we can also expand a little upon that and say, I need specific running styles. So we can put constraints when we generate these running styles. So we can say that 
for instance, I need a specific runner of two meters of stature, and he has to run at 20 kilometers an hour. And then we can generate a style that fits those constraints. So then, okay, we saw, suddenly we saw a great potential for overcoming the, the problem that we had for our customers, which were to, to generate the motions and record them. And often so, it is that customers, they have some recordings, but they also would have loved to have more recordings of different scenarios. So they, they always have some sort of what if question. What if this person had run faster or slower or had done it in a different way? When we can take this technology we have now and extrapolate from those running patterns that they have and generate the ones that they want to look at. And there's also been a good publication about how this works. So to summarize a little, we can constrain different anthropometric dimensions of the subject that we want to generate running style for. It could be stature, it could be length of different body segments, it could be body mass or gender specific uh, things. And we can also, we can also do uh, constraints on the different uh, running specific parameters. So we could also say I want uh, runners at different speeds. We could vary how should they impact with the floor. Should they land on their heel or should they land on their toes? Or we could also say that we want uh, wider steps or shorter steps, and thereby we could also with the cadence and how they run. So, so we have a lot of opportunities to, to generate exactly what we need. And the last thing that we also have is that we can take a whole motion capture recordings, a traditionally recorded uh, file, and then use that as constraints. So we see I have one subject uh, here that runs uh, with this style, now I want to also this little parameter, maybe he ran at 10 kilometers an hour and I want to see how he looks at 12 kilometers an hour. Then we take his whole um, motion cap recording, use it as constraints, so we get the most likely running style just with a little tweak of the speed, for instance. So, so we have this um, product, you can say, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how, how do we see this uh, out in commercial sense. So we have a lot going on trying to build it into some sort of vertical application. We see this as, as sort of a, an element that could be used if you want to investigate and extrapolate and you are working with cyclic motions. One of the things that we're coming up with is that uh, we have the same pipeline going for gait. Gait patterns which could be very relevant for gait labs and physiotherapists uh, needs to investigate a lot on different gait patterns. They could just generate uh, things, uh, patterns that they need. They could maybe intervene with something in the body model to see how that affects the gait pattern without the need for, for subjects coming into labs. And maybe they do it early in design process of some orthopedic design um, product. So we also see it as a, as a cloud service where customers of our, traditional customers of our software, they can quickly get access to a specific motion or a specific trial that they need in their application. And lastly, we see this, that we can build standalone tools. So you wouldn't have to have the whole stimulation software that we have today. Maybe you're only interested in, in some sort of a gate analyzer or running analyzer. And then we could build that service for you as well. So up until now, we have sort of had it like a some some sort of gimmick and, and a service that we're trying to push. Uh, and if you want to, to try it more in depth and you see how the outcome of these models also vary, we have uh, processed a lot of different uh, simulations based on this technology and we put it online for you to try out. There you can go and you can play with uh, much more features and you can see how outputs such as uh, ground action forces, they change when you change running patterns. You can also see how metabolisms change when you do these uh, altercations. So it's quite fun. If you haven't tried it yet, I suggest you to go and do that. And the last thing is that we would like to, uh, to acknowledge uh, our partners in this. We couldn't have made it without them. So a big thanks to, to their uh, work as well. And uh, that was a quite short presentation. So we have a good time for, for questions. I hope there's maybe one or two questions. Thank you very much.
The question is if it is also possible to use an FBX file format, uploading it into anybody. Do you guys know if that is possible or not? Uh, at the to the current day, we don't have a, a direct importer as we do with the other BVH and C4D, but uh, it's something that we have uh, in mind to do, so it would be easier. So, so I would say yes, but with a uh, little work to be done on it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there's another question coming in from Joost Boschet. Um, you mentioned that the generated uh, motion could be used in, uh, in infinite element applications. Can they also be used, for example, in a game engine like Xbox FBX output? We don't have any uh, FBX output from our system. Uh, I don't think we've ever thought of it as uh, something we would be very, very good at. Uh, but I don't see why you shouldn't be able to use the motions that we generate in, in those senses. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Um, I have a question, a question from Aishwar Daiwan. Um, he says it's fantastic to see those running simulations and what can be done with them? My question is, one, when you said you can generate like a running style from a mocap recording, how does that work? And the second question is, um, do you plan to make the running database open source at some point? Yeah, yeah. So, so the great thing about this is that you don't really need a, a recording uphand uh, before you do it. So, the, the database allows us to generate based on whatever constraints that we want. So, I can I can specify no constraints, which would give me the average runner, but I could also specify a constraint that should be I need a, a person that's 1.8 meters in height, and I will get somebody that was that but with all the other parameters set to the most likely, you can say. So, so you can set the constraints that you need for your trial, and then we can generate it for you. And the second part of the question, if we're gonna put it open source, I would have to say, no, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's another question from Peter Collins. He asks if we can combine um, IMU and EMG. I would like to use the IMG data to explain some of the IMG, uh, EMG signal. Then look at the remains, for example, how much EMG activity is there after accounting for the motion. So is something possible uh, like that possible in anybody? Yeah, so so one of the things, we don't have uh, it, the exact equivalent of EMG, but we have muscle activations as output. So when we run the simulations, you can uh, output all the activation of all the thousands of muscles elements that we have. And you, you can make an envelope of those uh, that's already readily available as an output, and you can compare that to, to EMG signals. Okay, thank you. I have another question from Sam Smith. Uh, he asks if, if would it be possible to com possible to model the effect of fatigue or combined with motion capture data to better understand how running changes over time during a marathon, for example? Hmm? Yeah, so our system and our body model is readily for, for modeling fatigue. Unfortunately, we don't have a good algorithm for fatigue and what it should be. Uh, we have had the different uh, try algorithms over the years, but we haven't really found one that we, we like enough to put it into a standard. But, but what you can do is you can make up your own and implement it as you want. There are no limitations on what, what it should be. Um, so it's definitely possible to do. Okay, I see. Uh... I got the question from Joost wrong. He asked if it can be done the other way around, export from anybody. So you can, let me check, use it for infinite applications. For example, if you can put the anybody output into an FBX. If I'm right, Joost, otherwise please let us know. Yeah, yeah. so we don't have that export function to, to output into FBX format, unfortunately. I have a question from Bauke. Uh, Bauke is asking uh, basically two, two, two questions. Uh, at first, he thanks you for the presentation. And his first question is, to what extent do these models express variability per step? And two, is it possible to alter parameters to mimic fatigue? Um, there are no parameters that mimic fatigue in the database right now. Um, you could model one, but you will have to you will have to recompute the whole database in order for it to be uh, ready as an output afterwards. So in theory, I think it should be uh, that you could do it. We haven't done it yet, 
uh, like you can see, it's, it's pretty early phase, so uh, maybe it will come in the future. We would like it to. Uh, I didn't quite understand the first part of the question. Could you repeat that? Okay, the first one, the first question was, to what extent uh, do does the model express variability per individual step? Um, I'm not sure how to interpret, but but it's uh, it. I would say it it uh, it shows all the needed variability. It's asymmetric in in the sense that that um, you can see left and right side differences. You can also constrain left right side differences if that's what's meant with it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have another question. This one is from Aukje de Vrije. Um, she asks. If the software also gives an estimate of metabolic power, would it be possible to use this system to optimize someone's running technique? Yeah, it does. One of the outputs we have is metabolic power. And you could set up a, an optimization that we, where you are looking for the running style that produces the least amount of metabolic uh, expenditure. So that, that is possible. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, I have another question from um, Michael van Wezenbeck. He asks, are there any plans on modeling quadruped motion in the future, for example, for horses? Oh, that would uh, rely on somebody to build a good horse model first, I think. Uh, so far, I've only seen a four limb, I think. Uh, but uh, if somebody comes up with a, with a good database of running recordings for horses, I'm sure we can apply the same mathematics. I think I can just chip in here. Okay. I actually hear. Uh... There was, uh, I posted on, on the anybody LinkedIn uh, a few hours ago, there was just published uh, a paper on this fall limb, equestrian fall limb for different types of, of uh, what's it called in English, different types of underlay and how much it affected the horse. But it is only one leg for now. But I think it's an, uh, a New Zealand or an Australian group that's looking into it at the moment. Okay, thank you. I have another question. Uh, this one is, can anybody be used in a setup with real-time calculation requirements? Uh, no, unfortunately you can't. So we are inverse dynamic space, so we need to know the motions and, and our engine is not, uh, is not made for real-time uh, applications. So unfortunately we can't do that. Okay. Uh, then I have a question from Cherry. Um, does your database include pathological data? People with previous injury, people with previous surgeries? No, at the moment it does not. It's uh, purely healthy subjects at the moment. So, so of course that's a limitation if you want to generate pathological gait or running styles. So uh, that if you want that, you need to have a database that includes it, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there are no more questions left. Uh, we have all the questions answered, I think. I see there's one more coming in. Uh, this one is from Kai and he asked if is there research on how certain injuries affect the running movement? Uh, yeah, I would guess that there is. Uh, it's not something that we have done uh, with this tool, since we only have uh, these healthy subjects with it. Uh, but uh, in the future, if, if we had a database that included information on what type of injuries and how it affects the model and the person, we could also generate them, people with those traits by using it as constraints on them. But um, it's not something that we have at the moment. Okay. I see there's a, another question has come in from Sam Smith. He asks, uh, what information you use to define maximum muscle force boundaries when using the optimization algorithms? Maybe kind of a technical question, but I don't know if you can answer this. Yeah, so so the, the muscle's uh, maximum force is uh, given by its moment arm and its maximum force capacity, uh, and then it's Salt in a muscle recruitment criterion, which uh, for most cases is a quadratic criterion. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, these were all the questions uh, we have so far. So if people have any other questions uh, after an hour, you think, oh, I, I really want to ask this to the guys from Xsense or uh, anybody, feel free to contact us. Um, for now, I think then we're going to. Um, and this q and I want to thank you both uh, for presenting and speaking at our conference. Thank you for that.